evening, ladies and gentlemen. Who in the room is older than 60 years? That's a painful question. <laughs> Think about it, because roughly 65 years ago, we started talking about sustainability. There was an important publication that until today matters. But why all of a sudden do we combine this debate on sustainability, which is, to be honest, quite old fashioned? Why all of a sudden do we combine it with a circular economy? And even more recently, why do we start to talk about transition? Well, the why is basically simple. In the year I was born, so you now know my age, the American government launched a policy, which of this is the publication, the official popular publication, and it says, be happy because you throw stuff away, and the more you throw away, the happier you become. This is real, this is not a fantasy, but this is where our modern communication day and age on throwing away stuff started. And as a result, over the past years, we have been accustomed to be people throwing away more and more stuff. And until the 70s, it was a kind of okay, but then we got the hang of it, and we really started to fill everything we could fill with everything we could throw away, which is very strange. And we didn't even find out we did so. so we created a lot of problems because there was population growth and the industrial production went up. And we said, oh, well, everything should be grown. And there was this economic growth paradigm. And uh, then all of a sudden we said, but we run out of materials, precious materials, precious ores maybe. And uh, shit, sorry for the word. We have something called climate change problems. What is this? And if you want to get depressed, you can fill in another 10 additional problems. And if we continue what we do, this is our present image of our society. This is what we consume. And if you look at the bottom, don't try to understand the entire picture, you can see that we waste an incredible, incredible amount of materials, ores and what have you. And that at present, we live in a society where at best, 9% is recycled. That is incredible. That is, that is beyond belief because we can, can go to the moon and back with the material we're using, but we can do much more with it. And if we continue like this, called business as usual, in 2050, we will have doubled our consumption and we really run out of material. But not only that, we not only run out of material, but on the way, we destruct our habitat, our ecological environment. And this is a beautiful, I think it's beautiful, a beautiful picture of a bumblebee. But do not forget, 90%, 70%, and along those figures, we already have destructed the insectal life. So it's not only the material thing, it is something that urgently needs transition. And the question then is, what then is transition? Well, the challenge ahead of us has three dimensions. First of all, we need to think about the way we use, we make, we consume energy. That is a crucial thing because we are addicted to energy when it comes to our economy. Second, we need to take dedicated, efficient measures when it comes to the climate challenge. And third, and directly related to it, we should stop consuming this almost ludicrous amount of materi materiality. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, quite, quite a challenge because we only have one Earth, so we can't replace it by something else. Now, what is then this circular economy? Because there's a lot of talk on what it is, but let's try to clarify the concept. We live in an economy since somewhere the 50s, others say the, 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 even the previous age, where on the basis of unlimited mining, we produce stuff which we throw away after a very short period. And we're totally used 
to do so. It started with mail razor blades, the circular economy, in 1860, roughly, because that was the first product we go to throw away. And now we don't feel ashamed when we throw away phones, computers. We thread, you know that we thread cars if they're not sold. We just put them in the threader. Yeah, we do so with clothes, etc., etc. So that's our economy. And we felt a little bit ashamed, so we started inventing something called servitization. It means don't buy, just use it for a period and pay some rent. That's the most basic thing of servitization. And it has become very popular recently because now it's called product as a service. Pass, and we now say product as a service for a highway, and we feel very modern, but it still is all servitization. But all this is still the same old economy with some gentle, nice bits and pieces on it. So the circular economy starts when we start thinking about how we can organize in a different way. That's also where the transition starts. Because the circular economy means what we have, the material, but also the ecological and the social side, we organize in a way that we keep a value. So it's all about value preservation. That is the challenge. And since we are on the route for value destruction, it's a complete change of mind. We start to organize in circles or in loops. And in doing so, we have to redesign our economic scheme. And the first is we have to think about repair and reuse. It means we not are not making products anymore that will be used for nine months, like an average phone, but a phone can be used, say, for five years, and we change the outside and the inside, but we can use it time and again, repair and reuse. We could build products, design and build products in such a way that we can, can entirely remanufacture it or refurbish it or redesign it in different ways. That is not only on a material but also on a chemical side very possible. We can circularize all kinds of materials, all kinds of parts and pieces. And then it becomes interesting, because this is basically what we know. But then we can also say, gee, can we design an economy where product A can serve as a product B, can serve as a product C, or can we have a commodity that we can change in a chemical way or in a mechanical way to serve several purposes? But if you say so, then you design a different economy. And also, if we do not want to use natural resources, commodities, ores, and what have you, can we grow petrol on a piece of grass? Or can we grow stuff that we can use time and again? So we call this substitution. And what is the market for substitution? Or what are the possibilities for substitution? Sorry. So if we take this entire the line of thinking, we see we enter in a totally new economy that starts with the design, which has an infinite number of possibilities, but we only started to understand what the concept means. And yes, it is complicated, because we have not one loop, but we have a whole range of loops. We have, for example, fast consumer goods, and they are being served and used on a very short basis for half an hour, for a day, or what have you. So how do you organize loops for products that you tend to throw away? Yes, or we have mid-range goods. We throw away a lot of textile. Every of us throw away textile. But how do we organize then a loop that takes five years, or three years, or two and a half years? How do you make that work? What is the logistic of that thing? Not only the technicality. And then even more important, we have a lot of slow goods, which in itself is excellent, because it means we use those goods for a very long time. But then, how do we design a product, a house, a road, a bridge, that is 
Yes, circular, 40 years from now. What are the requirements? So we need to develop a lot of knowledge. We need to develop an agenda for educating people to work in those different fields. And so far, we hardly have started to address this educational issue. And I think it is incredibly, incredibly important that we educate for the future. But we want to move towards this different economy. And the question then is, how do we move towards that economy? Well, I think we've now reached a stage where we understand that the consumptive economy is not what we want. That so far we have gone so far. But then we need to find for a different economy new forms of value creation. And I think the only way this is going to work is when we understand that we act upon three different values. First of all, we should, in the circular economy, put people central. If we don't, if we put materiality in central, we get a different economy. Second, it should be sustainable. We should not dig, throw away the word sustainable, but because a lot of things are not circular. And yes, of course, finally, many things can be circular. So we do not have one value, but we have three values. And if we want to use those values, we create new business models. And why do we create those business models? Simply because we live, as we sit here, in an economy. And if we don't make it into business models, it is not going to work. And we do so in an existing economy. It would be great to have a piece of desert and start the economy all over again. But that's not reality. Reality is we are surrounded by our stuff, and that's our starting point. So the first thing we can do is we can create platforms for use, platforms in which the commodities, the products we have are much better used because the average car stands still for 96% of its time. That's ridiculous. How do we design stuff that is used by more people in a more efficient way? And if we design that and we are helped very much by modern technology, this is what such a platform could look like. And if you look around Europe, you see all kinds of movements, but the possibilities are infinite to develop. Second, we should engage with people in making the transformation. And we've called that community-based business models, but it means that people themselves start to say, we create a community of circularity. And we earn, we earn maybe electricity, or maybe we earn silence, or maybe we earn food, but we need to develop community-based business models, because if we don't engage with people, it's going to be a story of freaks, and we don't want to use that. And, and this is how you can look at those models where the community creates their own value proposition. And finally, of course, in addition, and at the same time important, we create circular business models, models around loops, and that is a difficult matter. And this is how such a model could look like, and we've designed a couple of them, but the essence is, Several companies, several parties together create a collective business proposi uh, proposition. So this all leads to a really fundamental different way of thinking about the economy. Uh, and it means for the years to come, we will enter into a new process of value creation, a process that will not last for a couple of weeks. It will not last for the next five years, but it will last maybe for the next 20 to 30 years. But in the end, that is what the circular economy is all about, multiple value creation. Thank you very much.